Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. American conservatism follows the tradition of Barry Goldwater and William Buckley Jr., who, in the late 1950s and early 60s, redefined conservatism into its modern incarnation, a political philosophy that embraces a federalist style of republican government, federalism being when the powers of government, namely the monopoly on arbitration, the power of legislation, and the enforcement of said legislation, are divided among several co-equal branches of government, the U.S., for example, having the legislative, executive, and judicial branches, respectively, or, according to Alexandria Occasional Cortex, the presidency, the House of Representatives, and the Senate. I am the Senate. Conservatives, politically, also advocate for reduced government spending, desiring a balanced budget, where tax revenue is equal to or greater than expenditures, while at the same time wanting to reduce taxes. To the American conservative, the government's role should be limited to delineated and specifically predefined rules and powers, for example, in the United States Constitution. Conservatism also stands in opposition to Marxism, socialism, communism, monarchism, and aristocracy, preferring instead a quasi-democratic liberal republic. Towards this end, conservatives follow from the classical liberal tradition of laissez-faire economics, favoring deregulation in addition to the previously mentioned tax cuts with the intention of maximizing economic freedom. Social conservatism is defined as adherence to Judeo-Christian values. You probably witnessed it as opposition to abortion, to gay marriage, supporting school prayer, supporting the death penalty, and the desecularization of government spaces in general. They also support the use of the state to disincentivize behavior that they don't like, such as through the drug war. However, the extent to which this is the case will vary wildly between individuals and factions. Conservatives are also nationalistic, promoting the idea of American exceptionalism and advocating in support of U.S. foreign interests. The former, defined as the extent to which the United States was founded on the principles of individual sovereignty and self-governance, unlike any other nation before it. The latter, what those interests are is something hotly debated in between conservatives themselves. Neoconservatives, or neocons, argue for the promotion and imposition of American ideals internationally, a trait fairly unique to them. Constitutional conservatives seek to reduce the power of government and constrain it to its constitutional limits. Libertarian conservatives, sometimes also known as conservatarians, argued that the state has no role in social issues whatsoever, including against drugs, and the government should not legislate against abortion, nor should the government fund it either, such as through Medicaid or federal grants to Planned Parenthood. On the opposite side, paleoconservatives argue that it is absolutely the role of the government to legislate away immorality. This is by no means a comprehensive list of conservative thought, just some ones you might encounter most frequently. For example, I haven't mentioned conservative support for the police and the military. I say all this because I want to define my terms. As the title of the video suggests, I used to be a conservative, and it's very important that you know what that word means. I'm not here to be critical of conservatism. That's not my intention. Simply to state where I came from, where I went, and why. Who knows? Maybe someone will find my journey interesting. All three of you. And if you're one of those three, leave a comment below. Anyways, I grew up in a conservative household. My dad was very conservative. Now, I know you've all heard this one before, and you're immediately thinking religious fundamentalist. Nope. He was more interested in politics than social issues. Don't get me wrong. He supported and still supports gun rights, the U.S. Constitution. He's definitely pro-life but he was otherwise pretty relaxed. I should tell you about the time my little brother used a fake ID to buy beer underage at a restaurant with our dad having full knowledge of what he was doing in plain sight. True story. But I wasn't really paying attention to politics at the time, principles or anything like that. Why should I? I was too busy trying to survive government schooling. 
Why do I care what's going on with what candidate A is doing or what a socialism is? Now, I wasn't completely ignorant, but my knowledge of politics basically amounted to elephant good, donkey bad. But what I did know is that when someone has a monopoly on a product, good, or service, it should not result in lower costs or better quality. This argument, made in favor of universal health care around mid-2009, is what drew me into politics in the first place. You see, even younger, low-information NPC heretic knew, hold on a second, monopolies don't make things cheaper. These arguments in favor of universal health care or Obamacare make no freaking sense. These political debates became something of a hobby of mine, talking to people about why the government should be limited. In order to do so, I need to learn about first principles and natural law. In order to explain why universal health care doesn't work, I need to learn economics. Much of my time was spent reading articles, books, generally getting myself educated while listening to conservative talk radio personalities like Mark Levin and Glenn Beck. As I understood more, I was able to make better arguments without needing to default to generic talking points. I wanted to do this out of a morbid sense of self-satisfaction I got from making good arguments. I like to own the libs, you see. I was in the Tea Party in 2010, even campaigning for a guy running for the Republican primary for the House of Representatives in my district, an act I'm actually still pretty proud of, as I was sick as hell during that time and I went door to door anyways. He didn't win the primary in case you were wondering, but anyways, yeah, I was involved, and I voted. Then, on June of 2012, the Supreme Court was scheduled to make its hotly debated ruling on Obamacare. As I'm sure you're aware, it's the role of the Supreme Court to interpret laws and determine if they are constitutional or not. And it doesn't matter which way you slice it, Obamacare isn't constitutional. Nowhere in the Constitution is the government authorized to compel people to buy a good or service, in this case health insurance, and under the Tenth Amendment, any power not explicitly authorized is something the federal government simply cannot do, as the power is delegated to the state governments or the people. So it's clearly unconstitutional. There's no way the Supreme Court will get this wrong. After all, they're supposed to follow the Constitution as it's written, right? R right? Well, we already know the answer to that one, don't we? That June, the Supreme Court, in a 5-4 to four decision, upheld Obamacare, and I was devastated. My understanding of the U.S. government had been completely upturned in a singular event, and it, well, it sucked. It really sucked for me to see once and for all that government does not, in fact, recognize any limits to its power. I didn't abandon conservatism from that, no, but I did change my tune, becoming more libertarian, something like Rand Paul except principled. Though I still opposed abortion and gay marriage, I couldn't justify the government getting involved one way or the other. Strangely though, I did hold on to support for the drug war earnestly believing that it was for people's own good that the government arrest them for merely possessing a plant. In my discussions online, a question came up more and more frequently. What is the proper role of government? Well, I found the answer in a very interesting video essay titled The State is Not Great, How the Government Poisons Everything by Jacob Spinney. He gives a principled and pragmatic explanation of how the government cannot operate an economy and proposes an alternative to how society might organize itself voluntarily without a government. However, I'm embarrassed to admit that the video didn't make me give up on statism either. No, it would be several more years before that happened. For me, it wasn't a sudden shift or singular pivot point that got me to change my way of thinking at least not in this respect. Rather, it was a recognition of my own ideas over the months and years, and beginning to apply those principles consistently. It would have been early 2016 when I abandoned the concept of government once and for all. Really, by that time, all it took was me discovering the term anarcho-capitalism, 
Really, that was it. It took the most cursory glance at these ideas, and they weren't even saying things I didn't already know. Things like how the free market is the ultimate engine that drives prosperity and economic growth, and any state intervention in the economy, or even in the individual's lives, is unjust, illegitimate, and a gross misallocation of economic resources. After all, if, as the Keynesians argue, the government always spends resources better than private actors, the multiplier effect and all, why would any government allow any money to be held by private citizens at all? But the opposite is true. I later learned about deontological ethics, first principles, and the non-aggression principle. With it, I couldn't possibly defend the drug war or the death penalty. Yes, I did used to believe in the death penalty. I'm sorry. I was wrong. If police are as important as conservatives argue, surely they wouldn't have a problem with private police, where competition makes the good cops more valuable and bad cops, like Philip Brailsford, get fired. The same is true with the military. If regulations, that is to say economic restrictions, are indeed a problem, then reducing their number to zero would be a great benefit to the economy, wouldn't it? Conservatives claim to believe in natural law, that is to say our rights come from our self-ownership. All I really did was take the principles I already held and took them to their logical conclusion. The act of taxation is extortion and a violation of self-ownership and therefore illegitimate. Because the state relies on taxation to exist, the state's existence cannot be justified. However, people I looked up to when I was conservative simply wouldn't follow their principles to its logical conclusion. Maybe they were stuck in their ways and didn't know any better, or it was some kind of careerism. However, the simplest explanation, I think, is that they were freaking boomers. Whatever it was, it's been a wild ride for me. Many of the ideas I used to treasure now just feel passé. I was pretty patriotic. Now, whenever I see a 4th of July celebration, I'm not reminded of the hard-fought struggle of men hundreds of years ago for the right to rule themselves. I feel nothing. I feel nothing for my country, and nothing but contempt for its government. I'm still pro-life, and oppose gay marriage. But hey, I won't stop you, but don't ask me to participate either. And yes, abortion is immoral. But this is where I am now. Will I always be this way? I would genuinely be surprised if I am, since if you're not learning, you're already dead. But I can't imagine I'd ever become a statist again. I have no ill will to conservatives, but let's be honest, as long as you support having a government steal people's money through taxation, then you don't get to say you support property rights. And no, special pudding for taxes being necessary doesn't give you a pass. All you're admitting by saying that is that property rights are unnecessary. Questions? Comments? Critique? What are your experiences with conservatism? Will I ever go full hoppian? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.